and of cohorts who will never get old. For those who want to use video for news, news to carry the truth about places where truth is scorned but, and will never ever get old. These two factors against the continually dropping cost structure portend an exciting future for user-generated video serving niche markets. And if you add enough niches, the numbers get huge. This goes equally for independent films with more and more released on the web rather than in theaters. So looking forward and summarizing, I see digital projectors and digital distribution of movies to exhibitors as finally being the dominant and perhaps only technique. Movie theaters are not going away either as an industry or a social experience. In 10 years, most films will be released in theaters on video and pay-per-view video on demand at the same time as the various industries realize their markets do not really overlap that much. Ten years from now, high definition will be the standard video format in homes with both optical drives and digital recorders in broad use. Ten years from now, we'll probably talk less about the internet than about some broad concept of a digital network that will provide us with internet, television, telephone, and other services like video phones. Ten years from now, the dominant home viewing platform will still be televisions, but the dominant computing platform may well be mobile. As such, anything we could do at home will also be able to do away from home. And don't think we're necessarily restrained by small screens, since retinal scan displays will then be cheap. Ten years from now, there will still be big movie studios, because there will still be the need for big budget productions, and the ownership of those libraries will inevitably stay in such places. But television networks will probably be less strong than they are today as producers will be able to sell directly to home viewers. The radical call would be to say that the networks will die. But that probably isn't so. We'll, we still need them as a viable alternate path for Americans to watch American Idol. Ten years from now, I can't say whether Apple, Google, or Microsoft will be dominant. But I am guessing they'll all be in business and competing with one another. The same can't be said for all players, though I expect a broad consolidation throughout the major internet companies. But there are some things that won't change at all in 10 years. We'll still be going to the movies, we'll still be watching TV, and whether we're watching drama, sports, or news, or reality programming, the quality of the experience will still come down to good characters and great stories well told. Some things will never change. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Warren. Um, I think we all learned a lot. I learned a lot. The main insight that uh, stayed with me was the um, observation that came from your experience that the industry 20 years ago was something like a closed system. So they could agree on a standard or they couldn't, and if they didn't, the consumer refrained from buying. Now suddenly the consumer is not the consumer anymore, it's the user, and it came into the equation and it's driving a lot of the developments because the consumer is demanding something like download services. They want to download it even if the internet isn't really capable of delivering what they want. Uh, that would be my first and only question and then we are, uh, will uh, try to enhance the user experience and uh, it's your turn to ask. How do you see the part of the user within the next 10 years? 
Um, I've always believed that in any consumer market, call him the user or the consumer, he's the ultimate determinant of the viability of any product or service. And any um, manufacturer, marketer, or creative content organization that is not responsive to the consumer uh, will fail. What is unique in this digital world is the consumer can express himself with his usage, buying power, um, very dynamically in ways that are very liberating um, and empowering. The net result is he, um, as the internet removes intermediaries um, who tend to control the gateway for products and services, um, and there becomes a direct relationship between the consumer and the provider, be it movies, music, um, response to the consumer's wants is an imperative. And as it relates to creative content, if you're not going to give him what he wants, which is fair value, he's going to find other means to get it and circumvent what you think is the optimum means. The, the music buying public, in my opinion, simply wanted to buy a single song. They did not want to buy um, a 28 euro copy of Nora Jones. They may have just wanted to buy two songs. The elimination of the single, which in essence deprived the consumer from making individual choices on individual songs, um, created the demand for a service that provided the same. So the versatility of the web in getting product to the consumer um, is such that the manufacturer... If, if I may say so, getting product from consumer to consumer, because that's the really new thing. And, and to that net, you know, the, um, the democratization of media is really extraordinary. We've seen it in text. We see it in blogging. We are seeing it in video. We see it in music. The entities that typically control the financing control the distribution. And as the distribution moves to a virtual means, um, those entities that were gatekeepers um, will have less a role. Thank you very much. Um, there are people with microphones, I was told. And so, do you have questions? To, I think um, it's difficult to see because the light is in my eyes, but... Sorry, just, I just wanted to ask you to kind of explain what you said about small screens and retinas and how those small screens were going to be more adaptable to watching uh, movies in the future? Well, um, I'm not exactly an